across the country are being invaded by cowardly communist scum known as Antifa. In the microcosm of Austin, Texas, the University of Texas at Austin in particular, this growing threat is about to reach a breaking point. Is a subversive criminal organization using the University of Texas as a recruiting center, namely the Red Guards of Austin and the Revolutionary Student Front? And is the University of Texas aware of these developments? You know, if our office, uh, as, a, as the office responsible for student conduct, um, if we are able to um, identify uh, an individual student or students who we are able to find responsible based on um, evidence, there would be administrative sanctions at the university level as well, um, separate from uh, criminal responsibility. UT fraternities have been targeted with vandalism by the Red Guards of Boston. The Red Guards Facebook page claims that UT fraternities promote rape culture. A group simply labeling themselves as the vandals of UT Austin posted this, quote, let us make racist frat brothers and the administration afraid again, afraid of students, afraid of the marginalized and harassed, afraid of the exploited and excluded. Some individuals c claiming to be rogue actors and not connected with other organizations uh, anonymously claimed responsibility for um, some of the vandalism uh, on the private residences west of our campus and and that is you know certainly very frustrating the revolutionary student front um is not a student organization mm -hmm. um you know our university does not have any uh, rules against political or personal beliefs um our institutional rules are in support of our educational mission because uh, that is why our students are here is to learn and to grow uh, but our rules are also there about how our students treat each other uh, and how they treat this campus um, and that uh, those educational goals. And that's really what, what our mission is. The Revolutionary Student Front has even targeted the president of the University of Texas, Greg Fenves, stating, your marginalized students don't feel welcome or safe here, Greg, and your white supremacists do. So don't be surprised when we boil over and start to take this into our own hands. And now these communist groups are bringing their message to the Austin public at large. On February 11, 2017, Antifa Red Guards Austin member Lisa Hogan was arrested for aggravated assault when she threw rocks at the patrons of Eastside Tavern while marching in favor of the anti-gentrification movement in East Austin. Antifa members are now bringing loaded guns to protest rallies after publicly intending to use them. From their Facebook page, quote, there is nothing less desirable to and more hated by the state and powers that be than a Maoist Communist Party because unlike other so-called parties, it exists for one reason, the violent overthrow of the existing order. This means armed struggle, the establishment of the dictatorship of the proletariat, and the continuation of revolution in the period of socialism. Recently, it became public knowledge that the George Soros-funded Antifa group is selling concealed knives on their website intended for, quote, slicing conservatives. But Antifa has a big problem. We don't want them here and they don't belong. 18 U.S. Code 2385, a U.S. code against advocating the overthrow of the government, states, whoever knowingly or willfully advocates, abets, advises, or teaches the duty, necessity, desirability, or propriety of overthrowing or destroying the government of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. And of course, there's a long-standing 63-year act signed into law by President Eisenhower titled the Communist Control Act of 1954 that stated the Communist Party was described as an instrumentality of a conspiracy to overthrow the government and a clear present and continuing danger to the security of the United States. The act made membership to the Communist Party a criminal act and stipulated that all party members would be sanctioned with up to a $10,000 fine or imprisonment for five years or both. Despite that, no administration or law enforcement has tried to enforce it. Law enforcement Obama's socialist, communist, Islamic meanderings no longer hold a hypnotic sway over these United States of America. It's simple. Calling out for the overthrow of the United States government is not protected by free speech. In fact, it is illegal according to 18 Code 2385. So what are you waiting for? John Bound for InfoWars.com. If you've got a business, 
That you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The internet didn't get invented on its own. On this Friday Global Edition of the Alex Jones Show, David Knight is going to be hosting. I'll be popping in live as well. We've got a lot of special guests today. And also, we're going to have excerpts from the 30-plus hour global transmission in defense of free speech and in defense of the West uh, that started Wednesday and ran through yesterday evening. I want to commend the crew for the great job they've done. I want to thank God, of course, for all the blessings and support in the face of the enemy and his provision and his guidance and direction without which we would have nothing and of course i want to thank the amazing audience and supporters and our affiliates out there and sponsors without you we could not be changing the world together trump has had a spectacular victory with the repeal and overhaul of obamacare but an even bigger victory is the american people and the freedom caucus uh, that forced the first version of the bill that Paul Ryan and the Republican blue blood scum uh, tried to sneak through. That monstrosity was only maybe 30-40% better than Obamacare that Ezekiel Emanuel, one of the main architects, as well as Jonathan Gruber, another architect, admitted was designed to bankrupt our health care system and bring in a single-payer fascist system, not socialist, that's bad enough, administered by the megabanks forcing us to buy a product and raising the price as high as they wanted it to. So this new legislation I looked over yesterday and this morning has some major problems, and, and hopefully those get cut out in the Senate, as Senator Rand Paul has said. Uh, but regardless, this is a big victory, and it puts it into the Senate's hands, and the Republicans uh, there, Rand Paul, uh, and of course, uh, Senator Cruz and others who have really good voting records, uh, hopefully can make it even better. The problem is the Democrats want to make it worse. So the fight is intensifying. This is a huge victory. It took them two plus years to pass Obamacare. It's taken Trump a hundred and what, six, seven days, and it's about 106 days uh, to get it out of the House, and now it's up to the Senate. He has delivered. And the Republicans have the House, the Senate, the legislative, and the executive. They have the trifecta. So Trump's done some sideways stuff, but overall we've got a good Supreme Court justice in. Uh, the word is uh, Kennedy stepping down is imminent. Uh, so a lot of good things happening because we fought back and took action. Do we expect instant gratification? No. Do we expect a bed of roses? No. But, but really, really exciting, powerful things are happening thanks to you. Uh, out there taking action, promoting Americana. Promoting free market capitalism and open free society compared to Venezuela or Cuba or Soviet Russia or communist China or North Korea or these other authoritarian regimes is night and day. Our job is easy if we just don't let them intimidate us and shut us up and take action. But this is a big victory for the true constitutional libertarian proto-conservative Tea Party. This is a big, big deal. We've taken over the Republican Party so far. There's a civil war inside the bureaucracy trying to stop this, but we are crushing the force of state, the mainstream media, they know it, they see InfoWars as the tip of the spear because we are, because you are, and they're trying to dent us and demonize us and shut us up as an example to others to cower in fear. We're Americans, I'm a Texan, I'm not backing down, my ancestors didn't back down, and why should I back down when our victory is absolutely secured into the future? We are winning. InfoWars.com, spread that link to enemy, absolutely hates it. In closing, I know David's going to play this clip coming up. Uh, Obama has come out, of course, a few years ago and said, if you have a business, you didn't build that, somebody else did it. Total insane arrogance. If you have North Korea, you didn't build that, some dictator did. No, America was built on just a little bit of free market, and everybody wanted to come here. Imagine if we actually realized more of that, how great it would be. All the choices, all the innovations, all the freedoms. Well, now Obama has come out, the article's on Infowars.com, and said that he's scared, that he's frightened, that he's concerned, seeing a business he built over eight years being demolished, being torn down. Obama, you were tearing America down under global and selling off our industry and our ideas to special interests that you and others were profiting from in your global system. So to have you say, if you have a business, you didn't build it, somebody else did, now you're saying you built the last eight years when you were the one tearing things down, now you accuse Trump of tearing things down, when all he's doing is tearing the face-sucking globalist parasitic system off the face of the American people and, and an example to other nation states of how to get out from under this fourth, fifth branch of government that's globalism this crony capitalist system that sits up on top of us, you know, like some perching vulture parasite feeding on us. Just the incredible arrogance, the incredible overthrow of reality, the incredible in-your-face inversion of reality. To then say that Trump is tearing down his beautiful work when his work was tearing us down. 
So this is a day long remembered, May 5th, 2017, on the Cinco de Mayo. I want to wish you all a great Cinco de Mayo. I always enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Great, great fun. And I just want everybody to understand that they're attacking true multiculturalism, all of us enjoying each other's cultures, saying it's cultural appropriation, and trying to make us not have any melting pot culture, but to have a corporate culture of cult-like control and attack on free speech, where Bill Nye, the science guy, now bans saying the chromosomes make men and women. I mean, science is under attack. Science is real. These people claim science isn't real, you know, claiming that man-made global warming is going to kill us all. Well, the science shows it's not that. They want man-made global carbon taxes to totally control all of us and in the darkness rule us of the new dark age they're setting up. But again, back to David Knight uh, and the amazing videos and articles we have and coming up. A teacher in New Orleans saying she wants to be dead and then saying that a guy who's upset about it is an animal. I want to get this guy on the show. He's been a guest before. He's amazing. Mr. Dabari. But I am totally fired up right now. I'll be Skyping in live later. Again, if you're watching or listening to this transmission, they're counting on you laying down. They're counting on breaking your spirit because they know you are the spirit of resistance. So don't give in because you are the resistance. I salute you all and thank you all for your support. Amazing job. All right, and that was Alex Jones. I'm David Knight, and we've got a lot of news today. We've got a lot of information about Obamacare that we're going to be talking about. As Alex pointed out, we have Michael DeBerry, a guy who, uh, if you've been to New Orleans and the French Quarter, you've seen him there. He's got a... Uh, a booth set up there where he broadcasts our show. Very interesting encounters that he gets, and you'll see that on his YouTube channel. Of course, we had one <laughs> teacher wants to uh, kill Alex because uh, he basically brainwashed her son. Her son agreed with us, but she didn't have anything to say. She just wanted to censor us, which is what we always see. Maybe if she had talked to her son, uh, maybe there would be a discussion there. Maybe she would understand his position. Uh, maybe she might have learned something, or maybe she could have convinced him. Who knows? But that's not what the left wants to do. They just want to censor people. But I want to focus uh, at this point on what Alex referenced earlier. This is the article that's up on Infowars.com by Steve Watson. Obama says the Trump presidency is like watching a business he'd built for eight years being slowly ripped down. You know, Obama, many Americans understand exactly what that feels like because many people in America watched their businesses being slowly ripped down by you over those eight years. You really didn't build anything, okay? What you were doing was you're building a socialist wall. Just like George Washington said, we walk about freely, but between high walls. You made the walls much higher. You made them much narrower with your socialism. You know, your big monument to yourself was Obamacare. You're seeing this coming down. Of course, it was terminally ill, it was going to die, and now the Republicans are just kind of hurrying this along, removing the life support. We really need to pull the plug on it and remove the life support that you're stealing from investors, the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac investors. As Jerome Corsi has been pointing out for several months now, this whole subsidy scam that you've got going here, and really we ought to call it Venezuelan care, because that's truly what it is. Just as Hugo Chavez and Maduro like to fund they're failing government, they're failing society by theft, by stealing automobile factories, by stealing oil companies, oil drilling companies, etc. They think they can keep this socialism going, but as Margaret Thatcher said, eventually you run out of other people's money. Well, you haven't run out of Fannie and Freddie investors. You've been robbing Fannie and Freddie to feed Hillary and Barry. And that's going to play out. Okay, that's what you built. You built it on borrowed money. You didn't pay for it, okay? And we're going to take a look at this uh, half a billion dollar presidential center that he's building to himself. As Zero Hedge says, it's like uh, something that would make the pharaohs jealous. <laughs> and it, it truly is amazing. We'll show some pictures of that on that article here. But let's, let's see what he says. It says it's an article from Politico. Cites Obama insiders describing how the former president feels about watching Donald Trump conduct affairs from the White House. And it will make satisfying readers for Trump supporters, okay? Because uh, a little bit of schadenfreude here. The article says that Obama has displayed a range of emotions with regard to Trump, including stoicism, fear, and sad frustration. And, of course, it's like washing his business. It's not a business, okay? This is nothing but socialist theft that you have created here. And this, what he did was a monument to really the way America is. It is a mixture. Obamacare, like our current government, is a mixture of socialism, where you steal from one group of people and then hand it off to other people, and also crony capitalism, 
where you reward certain businesses or you require people to buy a certain product. And so what we have with Obamacare is a interesting mixture that reflects what American government currently is, a mixture of socialism and economic fascism or crony capitalism, if you want to call it that way. And then he went on to say this. He said, it's not in anyone's interest for President Obama to become the face of resistance. That's a former Obama aide, Eric Schultz, who's still his senior advisor. He said, when the former president speaks, he consumes a lot of oxygen and he can suppress the next generation of leaders from rising. I thought it was interesting because he said, it's not for Obama to become the face of the resistance. We just saw Hillary Clinton celebrating 100 years of Planned Parenthood saying, I am the resistance now. Okay, I, I am joining the resistance. She's channeling Alex Jones. She said in the past, uh, it's an info war and we're losing it. Now she says she's part of the resistance. Maybe it's Hillary Clinton who's copying Alex Jones and not Barack Obama. But this uh, presidential center that they've got there is absolutely amazing. We're going to take a quick look at that. Then we're going to take a look at Obamacare and we're going to look at some of these insane videos of the entitled people who think that they can censor other people's speech. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this, this Friday, the May 5th, 2017. I'm David Knight. We've been looking at this amazing statement from Politico. Barack Obama's advisors saying he's very disturbed. Watching what's happening, it's like watching the business that he built for eight years being ripped down slowly. And as I said before, many of us who had businesses watched in stunned silence as Obama from his throne gradually ripped down our businesses. And for him, it, he doesn't get the basic idea of business. Business is about sales, really. It's about uh, convincing people that you've got a win-win situation. You offer them something, they agree to the deal. That's not the business that Obama is in. If you want to call it a business, his business is holding a gun to your head and mandating what you're going to do. And that's a big difference between just this Obamacare situation. With Obamacare, everything was a mandate. Everything was a tax. What they're trying to do now is give people incentives, give them tax credits. Did Obama do anything to really help us buy health insurance? No, he gave us a long list of mandates, forced us to buy things that we really didn't need at inflated prices from his friends. See, the people that he knows in business succeed because they use government to hold a gun to your head and force you to buy their product. People like Chobani yogurt, where they get into the school lunch program, and then taxpayers are subsidizing the stuff that's going through the school lunch program, but he makes his business plan by getting subsidies, tax subsidies from the government by this kind of crony capitalism. And so all the people that he knows, the big businesses, the connected individuals, they run their businesses by incorporating subsidies and incorporating mandates on you taking your tax money. But what is the business that Obama is building right now? Well, he's building a massive monument to himself. Obama is selling himself. And of course, he's selling his brand of socialism. He's unveiling a half billion dollar Obama presidential center in Chicago. Pull up this article and show the people some of these pictures of what they're going to do. Now, of course, he's had a $60 million book contract to sell himself. He's also rolling out on the speech circuit. He's got $400,000 speeches a pop. This is coming from Zero Hedge. But now we've seen the first peak of the future Obama presidential center. It's not even a library. It's a center. A library is just part of that. And as they point out on Zero Hedge, it would make the pharaohs jealous. And guess what? It's going to have a sledding hill. How appropriate. Because Obama's policies have always put us on the slippery slope going downhill. <laughs> I think that's perfect. That's a perfect metaphor for Obama, a slippery slope. And they're going to feature that there. Of course, they say that it's a sledding hill because Michelle always complained there was nowhere to sled in Chicago when she was a kid. So now they've got it there. And everybody can go to the Obama Center and they can slide downhill, which is what the country did for eight years. Obama is expected to use the center as a platform to work on issues such as criminal justice reform. Is he going to push for the reform of the NDAA where we had indefinite detention without trial by the military? Or where you have assassination of Americans abroad without trial and conviction? That would be a good criminal justice reform, don't you think? No, he's not going to do that. And he's not going to have education for underprivileged children. 
guess what kind of education they're going to be getting? They're going to be getting propaganda. There's an interesting article that came out today from fee.org. said, MIT is making kid-friendly communist propaganda. I would imagine you will be able to find this book in no time at the Obama Library, at the Obama Center in Chicago. You know, that half-billion-dollar center that they're building. Uh, they say that MIT Press is proposing, quote, a different kind of communism, one that is true to the ideals of communism and free from authoritarianism. <laughs> okay, so it's new and improved communism. It has 5% less theft, 5% less starving, 5% less murder. But it would still be millions of people dying from starvation, murder, and theft. As they point out, the death toll from communist regimes in the 20th century is well documented by the tens of millions that have died everywhere from the Russian Revolution to the starvation in China and elsewhere. And Obama may be getting his own comeuppance because we see from the Daily Mail that Congress is planning to cancel his pension following news of his 60 plus million dollar book deal and his $400,000 speaking fees. They say Republicans are going to introduce legislation that would cap presidential pensions. Now, Obama vetoed that legislation last year. Isn't that interesting? He didn't want to have his pension taken, but they may take it anyway. I think it would be a great point for Donald Trump and the Republicans to make. The law would reduce pensions by $1 for every dollar over $400,000 a former president earns. And uh, that would take him down real quickly. But of course, we should have welfare for the rich and privileged like Barack Obama, shouldn't we? Yeah. Stay with us. We're going to come back. We got a message from Alex Jones, and we are also going to be looking at the details of the changes to Obamacare that the House passed yesterday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. During our 30-plus hour live transmission in defense of free speech and in defense of the West, we have seen an absolute outpouring of support, of listeners spreading our articles and videos, and of people openly pledging to pray for our operation and pray for this country and this world to be set free from the bondage of the purely selfish, evil, satanic forces of globalism. I want to thank you all for your support. InfoWars wouldn't exist without you. You are the InfoWar. The globalists want to destroy this outlet because they want to destroy a platform where the people can come together for sovereignty and for prosperity and for free market capitalism and for religious freedom and for the nation state and for men and women and families and children that are all under assault. We have the Bill Nye the Science Guy, a 1990s program cutting out where they break down the X and Y chromosomes and what makes us human, men and women. Men and women now existing and science is hurtful to someone else. This is the globalist using our well-meaning openness and our tolerance to get us to hate our species and give up on our life force. And the attacks calling us fake news by the fake news at CNN and others really show how sick these people are and how they're attempting to shut down free speech. So in the face of the Federal Reserve Board members suing us and George Soros' law firm launching the suit, and in the face of Google admittedly censoring us, it is we the people of every race, color, and creed who bleed red blood, the human race, that are fighting back and saying no. So again, during that 30 plus hour live transmission that kicked off Wednesday and ran right through Thursday, we saw massive, massive support spreading the word, spreading the articles, and our free newsletters. We can stay in contact, infowars.com forward slash newsletter. It's been amazing. And the financial support has been incredible as well. Again, we're not funded by George Soros. We're actually sued by his law firm. Uh, we're not funded uh, by the big Islamic groups. We're actually sued by them. We're not empowered by the establishment. We are empowered by you, your prayers, your support, and your financial support. That's why I'm going to go ahead and extend some of the biggest sales we've had in six months right through this weekend, right through until Monday morning. We have a giant 30% off discount on ProPure King water filters, the big, nice tabletop stainless steel Rolls-Royce model that cuts out all the garbage but leaves the good minerals in. We've got 30% off our amazing nootropic. And, of course, that's Brain Force. That's going to be selling out very, very soon. More is coming in the next few weeks. But I will, I will keep that discounted until it sells out. That may come before Monday. 20% off our Methyl Cabalamin Pure Organic 
Vitamin B12 that's so amazing you take under the tongue. 20% off winter sun, the vitamin D3 that I take also in the summer as well, but it's essential in the winter because that's how you produce vitamin D mainly is through the sun on your skin. Prostagard, an amazing formula, 20% off. 20% off BioPCA for the skin and the nails and so much more. Biome Defense, uh, the 25 billion cultures per pill, uh, amazing, game-changing, tip of the spear, very best out there from our years of research from the top labs uh, of a nutraceutical that is absolutely critical uh, as a probiotic in your life. Then, of course, we have Living Defense Parasite Cleanse. That's 20% off. We have DNA Force that's back in stock for a limited time and much, much more. There's a lot of other specials. A lot of items have free shipping as well. If you sign up for auto ship, you get an additional 10% off. You can sign up every month, every two months, every three months, every six months for it to automatically be shipped to you. And then you get an additional 10% off on every order. You can cancel any time. All orders of $50 or more also get free shipping. So this is total free will, free association. If you resonate with our research, if you see how we're changing the world together, it's symbiotic, then get the high-quality nutraceuticals. Get the high-quality non-GMO heirloom seeds. Uh, get a Trump is my president shirt to trigger the anti-free speech globalist. It's all there at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or you can call toll-free, 888 But regardless of whether you financially support us or not, pray for us. Spread the word about InfoWars because we can overcome the bots, the Google censors. We can overcome with human ingenuity their attempts to turn the U.S. and European Internet into something that resembles the communist Chinese censored Internet. So again, thank you all for your support. Thank you to the crew that does such an amazing job during these marathon broadcasts. And thank you to everyone out there who is spreading the word, because what you're doing is changing the world. We've been growing. We've been changing the paradigm. We've been waking up millions of people. Uh, this is an animating contest of liberty, and you're about to see more reporters, more crew, new studios, more field reporters, more action, more victory against the globalist. Their ideology is twisted, evil, and weak. Our ideology is based in truth and honor and strength. And when good men and women of every color... And every creed, take action. Nothing on earth can stop human development and our long march to the stars in God's great plan. So for myself, Alex Jones, and the InfoWars family, I want to thank you because you are family. And I want to just again thank God for all the blessings of creation and all the blessings of consciousness and my children and my family and the amazing tribulations and persecutions that God has carried me personally through. Thank you, God. Thank you for Christ, your son. Thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for humbling yourself and becoming one of us. You can experience what we're going through at our level. And thank you for forgiving us for the trespasses we've engaged in and not recognizing the incredible gift of consciousness you've given us. So, again, to God, thank you. To my family, thank you. To the listeners, thank you. And to my crew, thank you. I love you all. All right, and that was Alex Jones, and we do thank you. We do appreciate your support. Thank you so much for supporting us uh, through this time. And to give you an idea of the kind of insanity and opposition that we're facing, we're going to play uh, something from Michael DeBerry in a moment. But before we do, I want to play a quick clip. Uh, this is an article we have up on Infowars.com. Lawrence Fishburne, you remember the uh, actor who played um, in The Matrix? He was leader of the rebels in The Matrix. And his daughter had a very interesting drunk driving arrest <laughs> which in the middle of this uh, a lot of things were happening in this one of the things she did was to uh, blame all of this on donald trump her drunk drunk driving arrest was uh, the fault of donald trump so let's play a short clip of this and you can see this in the uh, comments on our uncle and i want to show you also uh, what they're trying to do in terms of removing Trump when we come back. But let's take a quick look at Lawrence Fishburne's daughter blaming the political situation under Donald Trump for her DUI. I've been arrested before, and I have friends that are police officers. They just okay. got hired. Okay. And, and not like that, but in the situation we are going through with Donald mm -hmm. Trump, uh -huh. as, okay. as a Latino American to another Latino American, I would appreciate if you can have me show me the exercise. Mm -hmm. okay. So I can do it correctly. All right. 
There you go. Yeah. And as part of that, uh, it's a longer video, which we don't show there because uh, she's engaged in uh, public urination, showing her bare behind and a Donald Trump rant. Uh, but, you know, it's it's her entitlement uh, because of this Nazi regime that we have going on now. The other day, I was going back and forth between work, and I'm not sure which day it was because it's all kind of running together with this 30-hour marathon. Uh, we have a story up uh, by Clifford Cunningham at Infowars.com talking about the secret conversations that are being held to impeach Donald Trump. And I, as I was driving, and I, like I said, I'm not sure which day it was, but I heard NPR talking about it. Of course, this individual, his name is um, Osnos is making the rounds. He's going, uh, wrote an article on The New Yorker, he's going on MSNBC, he's going on NPR, Fresh Air, Terry Gross, all this stuff, all talking about how he's got all these experts who say that we're going to get Donald Trump impeached. He says he claims to have interviewed several dozen people about the prospects of cutting short Trump's presidency. He's talked to Trump's friends, advisors, to lawmakers, attorneys who have conducted impeachment. He's talked to physicians and historians because they're going to try to say he's crazy. Not this lady who is drunk. No, she's not crazy. Donald Trump is crazy. <laughs> and they point out in this article, and this is something that's very important to remember when we start uh, just, I mean, they're not saying, you know, we look at politicians and they say that person is crazy. I mean, they're really trying to convince you that he has mental illness. And they point out in this article after uh, Fact Magazine asked psychiatrist during the campaign of Barry Goldwater if he was psychologically fit to be president. They had a thousand of them uh, say that uh, he was warped, that he was impulsive, that he was paranoid and schizophrenic. You know how they smeared Barry Goldwater with that Daisy ad, the nuclear ad and everything. And so he successfully sued for libel. And uh, we're going to go to... Um, uh, Alex Jones, in just a couple minutes, there's breaking news, and, and uh, we got Alex Jones coming in. Let me just finish this paragraph here. What happened with Goldwater was he sued them successfully for libel. And then in 1973, and we've had uh, Dr. Pachinik talk about this because he's a psychiatrist, the American Psychiatric Association created the so-called Goldwater Rule, which forbade making a diagnosis without an in-person examination and without permission to discuss their findings in public. So you have to actually do an examination, you know, not some kind of telepathic uh, feeling that you get watching somebody on television. And you have to get your patient's permission to go public. So when we look at all this stuff, I, I think the key thing here, folks, is that there, there is a danger when we look at what's going on with uh, his son-in-law, Kushner. And this loan, the failure to disclose loans that he got from George Soros is not just a bad idea for his political base. It's not just an ethics issue. When you do something like that and you don't sign the paperwork, that is a very, very uh, dangerous thing. And if Trump doesn't cut the ties to that, that could be used to impeach him. I think that's a very dangerous thing. Let's go to uh, Alex. He's got breaking news. Alex? Absolutely, David. You're doing a fabulous job. We thank the crew, the working with everybody for support the last 48 hours in the face of George Soros, the founded law firm, suing us. So remember the New York Federal Reserve suing us. They're openly in the news, admittedly, trying to take us down right now, but we're only expanding in the face of it. But it's incredible. We're so synced that this just broke on InfoWars.com 10 minutes ago. And so I wanted to call in, and I asked him, I said, what's David covering? Oh, he's covering the Lawrence Fishburne thing. But by the time, which is, I'm glad you did, it's important. Lawrence Fishburne's daughter, totally delusional and not taking responsibility for herself, peeing on the side of the road or whatever she was saying, with her butt hanging out. I mean, obviously, you know, drunk, or whatever. As soon as I go to you and I'm on hold for a couple of minutes, you're talking about what I called in about this so ultra massive that we should have it as the top Facebook story, top YouTube. We should really make a huge deal out of this because it's such a big deal. I'm going to actually be calm and I'll let myself get upset. I've studied how governments are taken down. I've studied how the global stop rate. I've studied what they've done in more than 60 other countries that they've always found, sometimes repeatedly, in Operation Ajax and 53 in Iran right through what happened with Kennedy in 63. It just goes on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, I have sources, but also, more important than sources, I have history. And what David Knight was just covering, it's on InfoWars.com, the Clifford Cunningham article, the New Yorker magazine, one of the most elite publications where they communicate with each other, just like Atlantic Monthly or the Financial Times of London. In that publication, they're saying, oh, how we could fire again. Not the people, but the globalists, the, the, the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, people that don't like the fact he killed TPP and it was supposed to swallow our sovereignty, people that don't like he's getting the Federal Reserve to actually make banks, make loans to small businesses, the fact that they don't uh, want him to 
actually turn the economy on. He is a real president. He is trying to bring power back to America. He's doing some things that are perfect and compromises, but they will still try to destroy him because he is good. He is real. He's irrevocably hurting political correctness. He's making us feel good about ourselves again. He's getting our morale up, the stock market, all of it. We were supposed to already be in a controlled global depression by now. They were going to bring in social unrest, you name it, and consolidate. So understand, I said after he won on November 8th, I said the real war is about to start. He's for real. They're going to use COG, the economy of government system, and now they have shows out with Keith Sutherland, to your buddy used to this, you know, called the, uh, the alternate or whatever. Where, where, I uh, heard some other term. You know, the point is that he's part of the shadow government, and so he gets put in as the alternate in the government. They're, they're they're now preparing everyone. They start bringing out secret COG stuff. Maybe one out of a thousand people knew about. You know, academics, researchers, twenty years ago, things we've been covering for twenty two years. When they start saying, "Oh, COG is no big deal. Oh, group of psychologists and psychiatrists. Oh, secret members of Congress. Oh, both parties. Oh, members of his own team." His own, his own closest associates, oh, the family see it and threaten and everything. And, and, and Kushner's uh, on the control of Soros and all the rest of it. And so they're saying, look, you destroy your father-in-law or we're going to bring you down, basically. And so Trump is totally surrounded. In 106 days, they've already partially repealed Obamacare. And they're devastating the globalist operation. Even though, let's say he's a battleship with 12 guns, maybe eight of them are firing right now. And, and as every month goes by, more of his guns get knocked out. But still, still, we're taking them down at the same time. It's like a video game at the, at the end of a level where you're fighting the boss. And your energy's going down, but his energy's going down. We are bleeding the globalists out. The pen's set to win. Unless you're thinking, thinking. Uh, nationalism's turbo surging. So they're attacking with pen, info wars, um, Trump, Nigel Farage, they tried to kill him three times. That's, you know, was off the record in the news. Came out, I can report it, but he definitely knows they're trying to kill him. He's been told to retire or dead. Well, he retired if, if, if they would actually follow their promise to get making on sovereign again, but they didn't. They backed off. So he's getting ready to run for prime minister. You know, they've said you're a dead man. So he has incredible courage. I, I've obviously been told the same things by very serious people. So folks have to understand this isn't a game. Trump is in an arena death battle. I've used that term, death struggle, death battle. Now the Democrats use it because that is what this is. This is no quarter. We're not giving us quarter. We're not giving them quarter. We just want to restore the Republic of prosperity. They want a North Korea meets THX 1138 model. And everybody out of the claims they're liberal or conservative to realize these fake fights between Democrats and Republicans are total and complete theater. They're not real. When you see real attacks, though, on Trump and, and all these attempts to promote killing him and stuff, that's because he is real. He is real. I've got a crew of 65 people. They're all great people, but still we have problems. Uh, directives get, uh, you know, get get messed up. I, I, a lot of it's my fault. Imagine having 4,000 people under you, and then you're interfaced with over 2 million federal employees, and then millions and millions of contractors and major corporations. They're doing whatever they want. They're running rampant. They're arrogant. They're sabotaging you. And now that they are openly in, now that they are openly in the New Yorker magazine saying, behind the scenes they're looking at his overthrow, not just his impeachment, and they're talking about using COG, even though they don't have the votes. They are trying to get people ready and lined up to normalize this in the bureaucracy for an assassination uh, or for an overthrow or you name it. And believe me, the Democrats and Republican leadership have said they're going to call everyone Russians who got elected from the uh, Freedom Caucus. And the Republican Freedom Caucus are great people, by the way. Some of them are war martyrs, but other than that, when it comes to sovereignty, Second Amendment, they, they're good people. They're misguided in some cases. They're good people. They're Americans. They're not perfect, but they're, you know, they're, they want prosperity. They're not eat. okay? They are the key to this. They've got to understand they're going to be next if this happens. And I'm just telling you, it's going to be so strong. I've done this in my gut for months. And stuff Trump does makes me mad. But it's his adjuncts just speaking out of turn, McMaster and the rest of them doing whatever they want. Uh, you know, saying arrest Assange and stuff to destroy Trump's base and his support. I know from insider, very high up, that he is disgusted. He is sick of it. They've demoralized him. Uh, not you know, I'm taking care of very serious families right now. I'm at coming today. David's doing an incredible job, but they get us conditioned to just accept incredible tyranny in our faces like it's no big deal. This is done. This is done over and over and over and over again. So we even have ultra massive crime taking place by the globalists and, and then myself, and everybody else. We just kind of halfway accept it. The reason we've been so successful against them is I do raise the alarm. David raises the alarm. We really get upset about what's going on. Don't just go quietly into the night. But here's here's the headline of the whole show today and the whole theme. 
help the listeners but really get the word out about Clifford Cunningham's article, which is excellent, but it's very dry. It's kind of like reporting, you know, that Hitler invaded uh, France or something in 1941. And we all just kind of sit here and, you know, go to sleep. Ladies and I'm not criticizing Cunningham, I'm just saying he dryly reported it as it should. The New Yorker magazine, the elites admit they're in Congress, they're everywhere. This is the shadow government coming out and announcing plans to overthrow the president, the elected president. And they're saying it like it's no big deal, like it's a, you know, going in and getting your tooth drilled on for a root canal or something. It's all very routine. It's, it's all no big deal. Nothing to see here. Go away. Because they are pissed. He's returning, uh, returning the sovereignty. They are so upset that this has really happened, that the power is being taken away from them. You can say he's doing some things that aren't perfect. That doesn't really matter. The power is being taken away from the globalists. It is being transferred back to the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. It's being transferred back to the states. We drain the swamp one city, one county, one family, one company, one church at a time. And so uh, David's doing an awesome job here today breaking this down. But I would just ask with all our guests and everything else we have coming up, this be front and center. And then all my writers write more articles about this because I've shot probably 20 special reports that are on Infowars.com. We're going to repost the entire hands article. Where I said COG's coming, they're organizing a coup behind the scenes of Congress. They're organizing at the Pentagon, from my sources. Then we had the former deputy head of the Treasury come out, and all these other people, and deputy heads of the Defense Department admit that there's plans to overthrow Trump. And they're stopping the overthrow of an elected president, folks. This is martial law by another name that they're now selling publicly. This isn't Alex three months ago saying it, or David saying it three months ago. It's happening now. We need everybody to get this article out everywhere. The president is in danger, and all of us are in danger. Let me just say this. We're so busy, we're going to plug once this hour. We did some visa fundraising yesterday, but I need to get more reporters, more crew fast. We've got all our nutraceuticals on sale, 30 20% off. Water filters off 30% with the Pro Pure King. A lot of that stuff's going to sell out. That sale has to end this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Federal Reserve Board of New York suing us, okay? We have I mean, we have the board member. We are under globalists. Sustained George Soros attack. And it's okay. We're winning. We're the American resistance. You're the American resistance. We're fighting. People have to realize how real this is. That's why the enemy is out there saying in the news, I voted for Obama with no proof. Total crap. Or saying, I'm not real. Of course I'm real. This is all real. We're changing the world. It's because we are so real. We are so 100% real that the global can't stand us. So we need your prayers more than anything. I'm praying for you and this together. And we need your financial support. And we need you to get around the box and spread Clifford Cunningham's powerful article in my videos and David's analysis and this live feed to everyone you know. We need everyone to go to InfoWorkStore.com and get the amazing nutraceuticals and water filters and non-GMO seeds and the Patriot Apparel to be like-minded people to fund the info war and help yourself and help us in the face of the enemy and let them know they're not going to defeat us. But they're openly talking about removing our president extrajudicially. Judicially, they are preparing his assassination. They have let him know the codes to his house, his home, have been taken in a Secret Service vehicle. That was all obviously on purpose. We are in a red level emergency, and I love you all. We're winning. We're turning the tide. But the enemy wants to act like it's totally normal. It's just overthrow our country, overthrow our president. No, we're overthrowing their new world order. We're pulling the face sucker off our face. We're getting the parasite off of us. Back to David and I, the incredible crew. I salute you all and I love you all. History's happening. Don't be like these zombies that don't even notice what's happening and don't know what's going on around them. We are awake. The sleeper has awakened. We'll be back with a second hour with David and I. Stay with us. All right, stay with us. We're going to be coming back and we're going to take a look at the details of Obamacare. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 